Hi there. So getting into uh, full on into winter here. Uh, I think when I think of winter, probably the author that stands out most to me is Jam Brett. Uh, we've done some Jam Brett before. Um, a lot of her stories, not all of them, but a lot of them have to do with countries where there's lots of snow and things. So she has some that are Christmassy and others that are just kind of wintry. Um, sometimes set up in the Scandinavia where there's a lot of snow and stuff. So <clears throat> this one is titled The Mitten. See all those animals there and what they're looking at? at a mitten there. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen with this. So Jan Brett, so written and illustrated. And don't forget, when you're looking at Jan Brett books, you want to look at the borders too, because there's lots of clues. And you can even see, we haven't even gotten into the story yet. And we've already got some things going on in the border. <clears throat> Once there was a boy named Nicky, who wanted his new mittens made from wool as white as snow. At first, his grandmother, Baba, did not want to knit white mittens. If you drop one in the snow, she warned, you'll never find it. But Nikki wanted snow white mittens, and finally, Baba made them. So he calls his grandmother, Baba. After she finished, she said, when you come home, first I will look to see if you are safe and sound. But then I will look to see if you still have your snow white mittens. I don't know if she trusts him. So off Nikki went, and it wasn't long until one of his new mittens dropped in the snow and was left behind. See it right there by my thumb? Huh. Grandma seemed to know everything. A mole, tired from tunneling along, discovered the mitten and burrowed inside. It was cozy and warm and just the right size, and so he decided to stay. It's like a little mole sleeping bag. Perfect. A snowshoe rabbit came hopping by. He stopped for a moment to admire his winter coat. It was then he saw the mitten and he wiggled in feet first. The mole didn't think there was room for both of them, but when he saw the rabbit's big kickers, he moved over. Now this is kind of interesting. So first we had the mole. Now we've got this rabbit, right? If you look back, it's talking about the mole. But look here in the border. Ah, we see the rabbit. Okay, and then we have the rabbit and the mole right here. And look what's that. Mm. Next, a hedgehog came snuffling along. Having spent the day looking under wet leaves for things to eat, he decided to move into the mitten and warm himself. The mole and the rabbit were bumped and jostled. But not being ones to argue with someone covered with prickles, they made room. Now remember, let's see here. Who's coming next? <laughs> as soon as the hedgehog disappeared into the mitten, a big owl, attracted by the commotion, swooped down. When he decided to heat move in also, the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog grumbled. But when they saw the owl's glinty talons, they quickly let him in. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with that owl. And oh, who's going to come next? Now, this is kind of interesting. On the other page, while all this is going on, it kind of shows what uh, Nikki is doing. He's just out messing around. Do you think he's even realized he's lost one of his mittens yet? Up through the snow appeared a badger. He eyed the mitten and began to climb in. The mole, the rabbit, the hedgehog, and the owl were not pleased. There was no room left, but when they saw his diggers, they gave him the thumb. 
So it's interesting, I use that word a lot, uh, when the mole first climbed in, didn't it say something like there was just enough room for him, he was all snug or something? Now look how many animals we got in there, and who's coming next? Ooh. And the animals seem to keep getting bigger and bigger. It started snowing, but the animals were snug in the mitten. A waft of warm steam rose in the air, and a fox trotting by stopped to investigate. Just the sight, just the sight of the cozy mitten made him feel drowsy. The fox poked his muzzle in. When the mole, the rabbit, and the hedgehog, and the owl, and the badger saw his shiny teeth, they gave him lots of room. They're like, budge over. Oh, I can't bear it. <clears throat> A great bear lumbered by. He spied the mitten all plumped up. Not being one to be left out in the cold, he began to nose his way in. The animals were pugged in, packed in as tightly as could be. But what animal can argue with a bear? The mitten swelled and stretched. It was pulled and bulged many times its size. But Baba's good knitting held fast. Oh my gosh. What's going to come next? What could be bigger than a bear? It's... Oh. oh. That should be okay. Right, a little mouse? Along came a meadow mouse, no bigger than an acorn. She wriggled into the one space left and made herself comfortable on top of the bear's great nose. Hmm. Now this time, look. <gasps> what does uh, Nikki realize? He's missing his mitten. The bear, tickled by the mouse's whiskers, gave an enormous sneeze. Uh, uh, the force of the sneeze shot the mitten up into the sky and scattered the animals in all directions. <laughs> an explosion of animals. On his way home, Nicky saw the white shape in the distance. It was the lost mitten silhouetted against the blue sky. Oh, there's his mitten. It got blasted skyward. As he ran to catch his snow white mitten, he saw Baba's face in the window. First, she looked to see if he was safe and sound. And then she saw that he still had his new mittens, just like she said. All the animals are scurrying back to their own homes and stuff, I guess. <laughs> He's got his two mittens, right? Hmm. But there's still a problem. What do you notice there? <laughs> He's got his two mittens, but I don't think that that one mitten's gonna do him any good anymore. Unless he wears it like a sleeping bag. So, all right, so the mitten, and then we've got another one, kind of similar coming up, the hat. So stay tuned for that one. 